Professor Hoffman, what age were you when you were sent to Colditz? Ich war uh, knapp 19 Jahre. I was just 19 years old when I came to Kolditz. Before that, I was on a German army training course for three months. Because I was not quite medically fit due to my heart, I was allocated to the German Defence Guard. After my training, I was transferred on my own to Kolditz because I could speak some English. I reported for duty, but was not stationed in the Kommandatur but allocated to sentry duties. It was the 4th Company of Battalion 395. This battalion was not stationed in Kolditz, but in Mühlberg on the Elbe, a huge POW camp mainly for Russians, and the first three companies of the battalion were in Mühlberg. So that we, are a relative self-standing we were therefore a relative standalone unit, without a battalion commander. Our company commanding officer was Captain Thoman, and there were three sections in this company, and I was billeted in the second section, and our officer was senior lieutenant, later Captain von Strauss. How long did you stay in Kolditz? I came at the beginning of September 42 and left at the end of 43. I was then given a new posting outside the Kolditz region. Then came a new mustering and I was from Kolditz back to another unit. Did you? only um, guard the castle or did you also guard the Schutzen Ja, die Wachkompanie hatte zu bestreiten The sentry company was split as follows. The main watch with 12 sentry posts, the park watch with one sentry post but only at night, the gate watch with one sentry post and, as far as I can remember, the Schutzenhaus watch with one, mainly nights. There was the watchkeeper and a non-commissioned officer as well. How long was your, did your duty last each time? The three sections of the company consisted of about 60 men for sentry duty, and although it did change, one section was on duty, midday noon for 24 hours, one section on call in case of escape, and one section was off duty, but only for half a day. Mussten, hatten wir Schulung, Waffendienst oder Ausbau der During the other half we had training, weapon drill and also improving the barbed wire defenses and alarm systems. It altered all the time. When I was on sentry duty, one had in the 24 hours four times two hours sentry duty. Four times two is eight and three posts. 8 times 3 is 24. For instance, one had noon to 2 p.m. sentry duty and 4 hours rest, and then again 2 hours. Oh, how were the duties allocated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four. Am Tag davor. The day before, a list was posted in our quarters. It said, for instance, for post one from noon, three men for the three turns. In addition, a watchkeeper, a non-commissioned officer, and a duty officer who controlled the posts. Where did you live? Yeah. 
The quarters were in many places in the German parts of the castle. The first section was above the entrance leading to the prisoner's courtyard. The cells were on the ground floor and section one was on the first and second floors. You could hear the prisoners through the wall. The second and third sections were quartered in an old three-story building outside the castle which was called the hospital, as it previously had been one, as we saw from a drawing. It was an old house laid out like a hospital and the rooms were on the first and second floor and each contained about eight to ten soldiers. Non-commissioned officers were quartered here, but not higher ranks. The officers were somewhere else in the commandatur, and I don't remember where else. We had Captain Thoman, Captain Strauss, and the Oberfeldwebel Rottenberger. And first section was controlled by a non-commissioned officer, as there were not enough officers. Der erste Zug, der wurde von einem Unteroffizier geleitet, weil zu wenig Offiziere da waren. Then there was also the company sergeant major, the mother of the company, who was known as the Spieß, who had lots of rings on his arm and who organized everything. Were you ever in, directly involved in any escape attempt? Ja, das bin ich gewesen. Da muss ich aber mal den Zettel... Yes. As far as I can remember, on the 6th of December 1942, there was an escape attempt over the roof, and I was on sentry duty in the German courtyard, and I pressed the alarm. They were Poles. Über das Dach, und da hatte ich im deutschen Hof Posten und habe die Alarmglocke gedrückt. Then, on the 8th of April 1943, there were two Frenchmen, and from the same sentry post I saw them on the roof behind the chimney. I shouted, halt or I shoot, but they went on, and I fired a warning shot in front of them, and also pressed the alarm, and others arrived who also fired warning shots. And then the Frenchman called, don't shoot, we give ourselves up. Then we stopped and the so-called Roll Commando, that was the three Obergefreiter, non-commissioned officer from the Kommandatur, whose duty and right was to control day and night the prisoners' quarters. They climbed via the ceiling light and brought the two Frenchmen back through the ceiling light, and that was the end of it. Immer in die gefangenen Quartiere tags und nachts zur Kontrolle zu gehen. Und die sind auf den Dachboden gestiegen und haben die zwei Franzosen durch die Dachluke heruntergeholt und fertig. Und das dritte, das war die Flucht am 2.9.43 von Sinclair. The third, that was Sinclair's escape on the 2nd of September 1943 as he tries to escape with two others, disguised as Oberfeldwebel Rottenberger. I, at that time, was at rest, but I heard the alarm, and I and a non-commissioned officer went outside, and what happened was that somebody fired a shot. The Unteroffizier and we are then there, and there is that then passiert, that the one einen Schuss abgegeben hat, das ist ja bekannt, weil der äh, sogenannte Oberfeldwebel Rottenberger, also der äh, Engländer. It is well known the so-called Rottenberger, the Englander, made to unholster his fake pistol, and the German soldier thought he would shoot, and shot, and his shot went through Sinclair's lung. Immediately thereafter, a prisoner shouted from the bars of the windows above, German murderer. The English medical officer arrived and confirmed the lung wound and then came back. Deutsche Mörder. Es war aber gar nicht gemordet. Es kam der englische Lagerarzt und stellte fest, ein Lungendurchschuss, er ist ins Lazarett gekommen und auch bald geheilt gewesen. Und diese Geschichte ist ja nun schon sehr viel 
berichtet worden. This story has been well documented and tells that the sentry who was patrolling the barbed wire stood to attention, saluted, which the Oberfeld Weber returned, and then they went on to the sentry post six, who had the key to the door in the barbed wire, which went down to the park, and then they would be free. Then Sinclair said, Open this door, you are relieved. But to the sentry, things did not look right. And he said, the password, please. The parole word, which was changed daily, was a name like Felsenschlucht or Schloss. Anyway, such a name. And naturally, they could not provide it. And the parole, die täglich ausgegeben wurde, das war ein Name irgendwelcher Art, Felsenschlucht oder, äh, ja, oder Schloss oder irgendein Name, jedenfalls immer für 24 Stunden, die kannte er natürlich The sentry nicht. refused to open the gate, raised the alarm, and the other sentry, 6A, who was on the wooden bridge, also raised the alarm and the escape attempt failed. 6A, der hat dann auch Alarm Glocke geläutet und so ist der Fluchtversuch Ja, er sah ihm täuschend ähnlich. Es war sehr gut gemacht, vom Bart über die Mütze mit sämtlichen Abzeichen, die er hatte. Er war ja ein großer Mann. As Rottenberger was a regular who had been in the First World War. He was a young man then and was awarded the Iron Cross. They faked all this. He was such a character and could be impersonated. There wasn't anybody else like Rottenberger. Das kann ich nicht sagen. Natürlich, zunächst in der deutschen Wehrmacht war jeder Soldat natürlich gedrillt. Wenn ein Vorgesetzter kam, wurde stillgestanden. I cannot answer that. Naturally, in the German Army, every soldier was drilled that when a superior passed to stand to attention. This he did, but afterwards it occurred to him, how am I to be relieved? I have only been outside for a quarter of an hour. How come that there are two other people with him? That is somehow strange. Why has he gone on further to the other sentry post who is bringing a key? And that sentry had similar thoughts about Rottenberger and therefore asked for the password. Was will denn der Oberfeldwebel Rotenberger? Und deshalb hat er ihn nach der Parole gefragt. What uh, weapons and ammunition were you issued with? Ach, alles alte Waffen. Und zwar hatten wir grässliche lange Gewehre aus They were old weapons. They were first class long rifles which had been issued to the French army. I do not know whether they were made before the war. They were so long that they were always hitting things and getting dirt in them, so that they had always to be cleaned, and the rifle was equipped with three bullets in a strip. The German carbine had, by the way, five bullets, and we had a long bayonet, which was so long that we carried it the other side of the body. By jeden Wachbeginn, mittags um 12, kam der Soldat von der Waffenkammer, at the start of every sentry duty at midday, the soldier from the rifle store issued us with five strips, i.e. 15 bullets, which were kept in an ammunition pouch, and they had to be counted exactly after the 24 hours. And if one was missing, it had to be registered in a book. In this book, as seen afterwards, there were various entries with a sentry with machine gun. During my time, there was only one machine gun, and that was with a park sentry. All the others had only their French rifles. 
Only the sentry on the gate und and the one with the key had carbine pistols. Die hatten eine Pistole. The sentry at point 12 had for a long time a French rifle and was issued at the end of 1943 with a German submachine gun. And then in 1943 a German submachine gun. But there was no machine gun there. Otherwise, at my time in Kolditz, there were no machine guns except for the park, where the prisoners went for recreation, such as football. It was a fixed, ancient and heavy machine gun, which was either French or Czech. It was never fired. It only stood there like a dummy. But, of course, it could be pointed, but it really seemed very peaceful. How many uh, guards were on duty at, at any time in the castle? Yeah. Es gab also die sogenannte Schlosswache oder Hauptwache. There was the castle guard. The main guard was housed in the building next to the prisoners' courtyard. The duty room was on the ground floor and there was a day room. And on the first floor there were two storey bunks where soldiers who were not on night duty could sleep for two or three hours. And there were 12 sentry posts and three men for each post. There were at least 36 there, as there was a reserve for the night sentries and also the non-commissioned officer. Therefore, usually more than 40 were there. There were four men on the park watch, also four men were on gate duty. And then there was the Schutzenhaus, so 55 to 60. Naturally, there were absentees, maybe sick or on other duty, so about 50 on watch. Did any of the prisoners ever try to bribe you? Verstehen Sie bribe? No. Um, Sie, Sie geben Sie uh, Geld? Ach so, bestechen, bestechen. I had one case. When a sentry was on duty outside the castle, there was no opportunity to meet prisoners. Only the sentry in the courtyard was amongst the prisoners during the day. The prisoners, all young men, romped around on nice days playing basketball, lounged in the sun, read books, etc. And once the ball hit my leg, and that did not worry me, and they said, excuse me, it was so very peaceful. Das hat uns nicht gestört und da haben die auch gesagt, excuse me, das war alles friedlich. Und einmal hat mich einer angesprochen und hat And once, one prisoner English. asked me, did I speak English? Gesagt, and I replied, a little bit. Und dann hat er mir erzählt, dass ihm aus dem dritten Stock And he told me that his socks, which he had hung out to dry, had fallen onto the terrace from the third floor. And could I make arrangements that he got his socks back? I will try it. I replied, I will try it. And I got in touch with the duty watchkeeper and I went out, found his socks and gave them back to him. When I next saw him, he thanked me. And that was the only time I was approached. Do you remember any of the commandants? Schmidt, Glacier or Plavi? Commandant Schmidt was before my time, or just at the end. I did not know him, but I knew Pravit. Colonel Pravit, at the start of his reign, ordered that the barbed wire defences must be considerably strengthened. Therefore, on the non-duty half day, we had the horrible task of unravelling the barbed wire with gloves, hanging it and fixing it to the wooden posts and crisscrossing it to wooden stanchions. Dort läuft, muss er hängen bleiben und fällt hin. 
Das ist aber eigentlich nie zur Wirkung gekommen, denn dort ist keiner herunter. Und ja, dann Püpke, den Zähloffizier und noch ein paar andere. Wenn Sie mir die Namen sagen, dann erinnere ich mich, aber aus dem Kopf kann ich die And there was Püpke, the appell officer and some others. If you say some names, perhaps I will remember them, and I do not have them in my head. Pupke is in my memory, and that was all. There was such a big difference in age. I was 20, but they at least 45, and they were elegantly dressed. And when I was on duty in the German courtyard, their mess was on the left-hand side where the museum is today. And they had often parties there in the evening. Oft gefeiert, die Kommandanturoffiziere. Und da gab es noch gut zu essen und zu trinken. Und da weiß ich auch noch, man musste die ja dann grüßen, wenn sie zurückliefen. Und da waren die manchmal nicht gerade betrunken, aber sie waren heiter von ihrem Abendessen und Wein trinken. Und dann äh, kenne ich natürlich persönlich gut. Diese beiden Offiziere, die ich vorhin schon genannt habe, von der Wachkompanie. They had lots to eat and drink, and I had to salute them when they returned. They were not actually drunk, but in good spirits. Then the officers I did know very well were the officers I mentioned from the guard company. Captain Thoman was a very educated and pleasant man. He was a commercial director in civilian life and always looked after his staff. Captain Strauss was slightly younger and was also pleasant and greeted his sentries with a handshake and on New Year's Eve wished a very happy New Year. It was a pleasant feeling and also with the others. Oberfeldwebel, the Spies, not an officer, and the other non-commissioned officers. I had no problems with them, whether they be sergeants or corporals. We used phrases like Herr Oberfeld. We were respectful, but seniority was never overdone. Oder Herr Oberfeld, das wurde abgekürzt, aber es ging zackig zu, aber nicht übertrieben. Do you remember Eggers at all? Ja. Eggers? Ja, ja. Pübke, Eggers, das sind so die, ja, ja. ja. Prem? Ja. He was, uh, Prem was still there. Bitte? Prem was still there when you were there? Ja, 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 ja. Die habe ich hauptsächlich gesehen beim Zählappell. Äh, wenn, äh, aber das kommt dann, kann ich dann später noch erzählen. Beim Zählappell ähm, mussten ja sämtliche Gefangenen... Yes, I mainly saw him during Appell. I will talk about Appell later. At Appell, all the prisoners had to march to parade by nationality in blocks. And all the non-duty men from the guard company were ordered to guard all the doors from which the English, Poles and French came, so that nobody disappeared. ...dass keiner von dem Hof wieder verschwand. Und dann kam der deutsche Zähloffizier, eben Pipke oder einer, und dann... Then the German appell officer appeared, Pipke or some other, and it was all very friendly with salutes, except when there was a person missing, and then there was a critical situation. Then the appell lasted a long time, there was another count, and the POW's details with their picture were brought. Who is missing? Dutchman? And this was the story of the dummy that they had copied, and I was there then. It came to light the next day that it was noticed on the recount that somebody was missing, and also that the previous count had been done by Captain Pipke and checked and showed that everybody was there. You were on guard. How did you contact the guard room? Uh, did you use radios? No, 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 no. Es gab an jeden no, no, no. Each sentry had a specific sector, and it was sometimes very difficult as we had to march to and fro, and sometimes it was very narrow and we had to watch the windows. It was difficult to look right to the top, and sometimes the French or the British were in full voice, or shouted, or threw paper or something at one's feet, and one had to look at what was there or what it was. At one point in the sector there was a bell, and one could press that, and the alarm sounded in the guard room. And an einer Stelle des Abschnittes war eine Klingel, und dort konnte man also drücken, und das gab in der Wachstube Alarm. 
when you went into the lager, did you have to give a password or a disk? Those of us who were billeted outside the castle in the Krankenhaus could go therein without a password. For those billeted in the castle, i.e. the first section, had to go through the guard at the gate, had to say a password or show his pass. The non-commissioned officer knew his guard naturally. That was not so strict for us. Der musste dort das Passwort angeben und vielleicht auch mal seinen Ausweis zeigen. Aber der Unteroffizier kannte natürlich die deutschen Wachsoldaten. Und das war nicht so streng für uns. Jeden Tag. Every day. It was in use for 24 hours. Do you remember Oberschütze Jung, Michael? Ja, das habe ich nur indirekt, ihn selber habe ich nicht gekannt, denn er ist schon vor meiner Zeit verhaftet worden. Also die ganze Geschichte liegt vor dem September 42. Und irgendwann in der Zeit, wo ich dann da war... I did not know him myself, but only indirectly, and he was arrested before my time. The whole episode happened before September 42. Whilst I was at Koditz, there was a weekly appell for us taken by Spies, where we were paid our wages and told what was expected of us as soldiers. And once Captain Thoman was there, and we were brought to attention. Kompanie stillgestanden, und dann hat der Hauptmann ein Blatt verlesen, wo drauf stand, dass die. The captain read out a notice that said that this soldier had been sentenced to death due to contact and supplying prisoners and that he sought a pardon, but that was rejected. And the last sentence was that the death penalty had been applied, and it was made clear to us that we should not do anything so stupid by talking to or helping the prisoners. Und damit wurde uns das bekannt gegeben und noch eine Belehrung natürlich dazu, dass wir ja nicht solchen Unsinn machen sollten, mit den Gefangenen eben zu reden oder gar denen irgendwas mitzubringen. Do you know anything about the, the guard hmm? who was found dead in the parcel? Nein, no? nein, das weiß ich nicht. Das no, ist I don't. After my time. Ja, das weiß ich nicht. Were you involved in the appeal? Ja, ich hatte vorhin schon erzählt, dass... Yes. As I have already said, there was appell. At the beginning, three times a day, and in the winter, in the evening, it was done under floodlights, which was especially difficult and often with snow. Und wenn appell war, mussten alle Gefangenen aus ihren Quartieren die Treppen runterkommen und sich in Blocks nationalitätenweise aufstellen. Und die Senior Offiziere meldeten dem deutschen C. When there was appell. All the prisoners had to come down the stairs from their quarters and line up, and the senior officer reported to the appell counting officer. The royal commando was also there, who, in the meanwhile, went into the empty quarters and searched, prized open floorboards or those which were damaged or whether there was dirt anywhere. So their job was to control the empty quarters, so that they would not be disturbed, and so that no prisoner could run away and disturb the appell, we were ordered to guard the entrances. So, if there were five entrances to the stairs, there were five soldiers on guard with their rifles across them in front of the door, nobody was allowed in or out. That was all, there is nothing more to say. Did you ever uh, work at another prison camp? No. No, no Koldits. No. Do you remember any of the prisoners in particular? We, we've spoken about Sinclair. Were there others that you remember? Yeah, uh, Sinclair is mir nur durch diesen Fluchtversuch bekannt geworden vorher ist mal erzählt worden, dass der schon mehrfach ausgerissen ist, aber ich habe ihn nicht mit Bewusstsein Sinclair was known to me because of the escape, and it was told to me that he had escaped before. 
He is not now in my memory, but should I see a picture, I would know it was Sinclair. I have a memory of Romilly, the nephew of Churchill. He spent the night in a cell opposite the gate, which was next to the entrance to the barber shop and the dentist. In the middle of this length of building, there was a door with a peephole. During the day, Romilly could go walking with the others in the courtyard and do what he wanted. But nights, he was locked into his room. The sentry post 12 was manned in the courtyard during the day, and at night 12A was placed by his cell. Of course, the prisoners were not allowed in the courtyard at night, only in their quarters. I often had sentry post 12A, and my duty was to look every half an hour to see if he was in his bed, and I did this. In the morning the door was opened and he came out, and then he was a prisoner like all the others. He was a journalist in Narvik when he was captured, and he was a so-called prominente. His nickname given by us was Emil, not Romilly. And then I knew the Lieutenant Colonel Bader. He was up a lot of the time because of his artificial limbs and because he was slightly older and was always observing things. When I was in the courtyard, I recognized him as Bader. Have you met any of the prisoners since the end of the war? No, yeah, 1995. Yes, in 1995, I was invited to the fifth anniversary celebration of the liberation of Kovitz by the Americans. And there was a podium discussion in the Schutzenhaus, which is now called the Europa House. And there was an Englishman whose name is in my papers. Also on the podium was a Colditz inhabitant who knew the camp in his childhood days. And there was a person from Saxony or Thuringia who posed questions to us, and just like we are doing now. And we answered the questions about the camp and he summarized. Then there were questions about the commandatur, the regime in the camp, escape attempts. And then the Englishman related his experiences, but he had not participated in any escapes. Were you at the camp after the other nationalities left, when it was just a British camp? Das habe ich nicht mehr erlebt. Zu meiner Zeit waren noch die anderen Nationalitäten da. Lediglich die Holländer habe ich auf ihrem Transport vom 6. bis 11. I did not witness that period. During my time, the other nationalities were there. I went with the Dutch when they were transported between the 6th and 11th of June 1943 to Stanislaw in Galicia. The commander of the transport was Captain Strauss. They were transported in two coaches and a freight coach for their baggage, and the cars were attached to trains throughout Saxony, Silesia, Krakow, Lemberg, and to Stanislaw. Ausgerissen nachts und Baron von Leiden, der mit dem dessen Sohn. On the Silesian-Polish border near Gleiwitz, a Dutchman escaped at night. I spoke with Baron von Leiden's son in 1995 in Kolditz. Baron von Leiden could not speak German, so I spoke through the son, and we were both to meet each other again. No, not Baron von Leiden, von Linden, and he was captured in Gorlitz. The train coach window was covered with barbed wire, but of course there was also an exit, as everybody had to exit somehow. 
mit Stacheldraht vergittert waren, aber natürlich war irgendwo der Ausgang. Wir mussten ja auch heraus. We und had to write reports and he probably hid under the seat whilst the other Dutch talked between themselves and caused a distraction. Abgelenkt und dann ist er durch und es war etwas schwierig, dort war Halt und natürlich haben die Holländer gesagt, wir brauchen Wasser und da ist der Feldwebel und noch ein anderer eben gegangen mit Gefäßen und dann war dort auch noch It was considerably difficult to control and then there was a stop and the Dutch said they needed water and a corporal and another went with containers. And there was a Gasthof there at the station, and those soldiers not on duty also went there, and the captain was asleep. They telegraphed straight away, and he was, as I said, captured in Gorlitz. The German soldiers gelacht and said, wegen 58 men kommt ihr mit so viel Soldaten an. And then they arrived at Stanislaw, and the German soldiers based there laughed and asked why they had so many soldiers for 58 men. They were hardly on the first floor to be registered when three men jumped down from the balcony, ran through the garden and away. We all swarmed out, and one had sprained his ankle and lay under a tree, and then came Hände hoch, and we soon found the others afterwards, and the other soldiers were amazed, as nobody in the East had tried to escape. However, we still had the English, the French, the Poles and the Belgians in the camp. It must have been from 1944 that they were moved from Kolditz. Were you surprised that Colditz has become so well known? Ja, das hat mich schon bis zu einem gewissen Grad überrascht, weil ich ja erst selbst noch bis 1949 in sowjetischer Kriegsgefangenschaft war. It didn't strike me as surprising, as I was myself a prisoner of the Russians until 1949. Therefore, I had no opportunity to hear anything about the end in 1945. I was in the East Zone, the Occupied Zone, and news from the West was not available to us, or very scarce. And it was only much later, as I visited Kolditz with my wife and two daughters, and that was about 1985, that things became apparent. I wished to show them Kolditz and we visited the museum where there was a very able employee who went to England with an Englishman after the wall came down. Angestellte, die dann aber mit einem Engländer nach England, sogar nach der Wende, weggegangen ist, die war sehr... She could speak fluent English and was very good and had collected everything. And we did a tour and I explained that I had been there as a soldier during the war. Then she was all ears and I had to tell all. Because of that, I was invited to the celebration in 1995. And then I noticed that many people had written books about Kolditz and that the English considered Kolditz Castle a notorious camp. I must say, however, that the museum knew nothing about the camp guard. They only knew about the commandatur, as the English only had contact with the commandatur. Die kannten die Wachkompanie gar nicht. Die kannten eben nur die Kommandantur, weil die Engländer eben auch nur... Pupke and Pravit, they were known. They knew nothing about my guard company and Captain Thoman until I told it. And the whole Wach company, as they were called, I told them first. So, I have no more questions. So, vielen Dank for the help with our archive. Please, I have... It's very interesting. I have done it. Thank you very much.
Just after midnight on the 13th of February 1945, 773 Lancasters of RAF Bomber Command dropped 2,660 tonnes of high explosives and incendiary bombs on Dresden. The following day, 311 aircraft of the American Air Force completed the destruction of one of the most beautiful cities in Europe. The Second World War ended within a few months of the terrible raid on Dresden. For the next 45 years the city was part of the German Democratic Republic. The centre of the once beautiful city was left as it stood at the end of the war, allegedly as a memorial to the 50,000 who died in the firestorms that followed the air raids of February 1945. The East Germans built many blocks of flats in the bland styles of the communist culture, but not much else. There was no money for the reconstruction of the devastated buildings of the old Dresden. When the two Germanys were reunified in 1990, there was suddenly money available for both new building and restoration work on the shattered 17th and 18th century buildings for which Dresden had been famous. Much of the town was flattened by the bombs and soon these areas were laid out as broad streets where modern trams run with typical German efficiency. Many new buildings were commissioned, not all to the taste of the local population. Within five years the derelict areas had become business and shopping centres. Much of the newly developed part of town is traffic free. There are many hotels for the visitors that the city fathers hope will again flock to Dresden once the restoration of the old city is complete. The city straddles the River Elbe and the river is crossed by many old bridges, including the famous Blue Wonder. Wherever you look in the city, restoration and reconstruction work is underway. Palaces, colleges, theatres and churches are being patiently restored by highly skilled craftsmen from all around the world. Most famous of all Dresden's landmarks was the massive, beautiful Frauenkirche, or Church of Our Lady, seen in this wonderful painting by Canaletto. Following the bombing, all that remained of the church were these two shattered stubs. Today, all that can be seen is this huge mass of scaffold and plastic sheeting. The Golden Cross is a gift from the people of Coventry and will one day crown the magnificent dome of this glorious building, which for the moment lies like a vast jigsaw on these racks waiting to become the centre of attraction for the visitors who are already beginning to visit the reborn city of Dresden. <laughs>